from Denver, Colorado, it's theCUBE, covering Supercomputing 17, brought to you by Intel. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at Supercomputing 2017 in Denver, Colorado, talking about big, big iron. We're talking about space <laughs> and new frontiers, black holes, mapping the brain. That's all fine and dandy, but we're going to have a little bit more fun this next segment. We're excited to have our, our, our next guest, Bernie Spang. He's a VP Software Defined Infrastructure for IBM, and his buddy and guest, Wayne Clanfield, HPC Manager for Red Bull Racing. And for those of you that don't know, that's not the pickup trucks. It's not the guy jumping out of the space. This is the Formula One racing team. The fastest, most advanced race cars in the world. So gentlemen, first off, welcome. Thank you, Jeff. So what is a race car company doing here at a hyper supercomputing conference? Um, obviously we're very interested in high performance computing, so traditionally we've used a wind tunnel to do our external aerodynamics. Um, HPC allows us to do many, many more iterations, design iterations of the car, so we can actually kind of get more iterations of the designs out there and make the car go faster very quicker. So that's great, so you don't, you're not limited to how many times you can get it in the wind tunnel at the time you have in the wind tunnel. I'm sure there's all types of restrictions, costs and otherwise. There's lots of restrictions on both the wind tunnel and in HPC usage. So with HPC we're limited to 25 teraflops, which isn't many teraflops. 25 <laughs> teraflops. That's all. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> and Bernie, yes. how did IBM get involved in, in Formula One racing? Well, I mean our, our spectrum computing offerings are about virtualizing clusters to optimize efficiency and the performance of the workloads. So our Spectrum LSF offering is used by manufacturers, designers, uh, to get ultimate efficiency out of the infrastructure. So with the Formula One restrictions on the teraflops, you want to get as much work through that system as efficiently as you can. And that's where Spectrum Computing comes in. That's great. And so again, back to the simulation. So not only can you just do simulations because you've got the capacity, but then you can customize it, as you said, I think before we turn on the cameras, for specific tracks, specific race conditions, all types of variables that you couldn't do very easily in a traditional wind tunnel. Yes, obviously it takes a lot longer to actually kind of develop, create, and rapid prototype the models and get them in the wind tunnel and actually test them. And it's obviously much more expensive. So by having a HPC facility, we can actually kind of do the, the design simulations in a virtual environment. So what's been kind of the, the aha from that? Is it just simply more, better, faster data? Is there some other kind of transformational thing that you, that, that you absorbed as a team when you started doing this type of simulation versus just physical simulation in a wind tunnel? Um, we started using HPC and computational fluid dynamics about 12 years ago in anger. It traditionally started out as a complementary tool to the wind tunnel. But now, with the advances in HPC technology and software from IBM, it's actually beginning to overtake the wind tunnel. So it's actually kind of driving the way we design the car these days. That's great. Yeah. So Bernie, working with super high-end performance, right, where everything is really optimized to get that car to go a little bit faster, just a little bit faster. Right. Pretty exciting space to work in, you know. There's a lot of other great applications, aerospace, genomics, this and that, but this is kind of a fun thing you can actually put oh, your hands on. Oh, it's definitely fun. It's definitely fun being with the Red Bull Racing team and, and with our clients when we brief them there. Um, but we have you know, commercial clients in automotive design, aeronautics, uh, semiconductor manufacturing, where getting every bit of efficiency and performance out of their infrastructure is also important. Right. Maybe right. they're not limited by rules, but they're limited by money, right. <laughs> you know, right. and the ability to investment, and their ability to get more out of the environment gives them a competitive advantage as well. And really what's, what's interesting about racing and, and a lot of sports, right, is you get to witness the competition, right? We don't get to witness the competition between big companies, you know, day to day. You're not, you're not kind of watching it in those little micro instances. So, but, but the good thing is you get to learn a lot from such a focused, relatively small team yes. as Red Bull Racing that you can apply to other things. So what are some of the learnings as you've got to work with them that you've taken back? Well, certainly they, they push the performance of the environment and they push us, which is a great thing for, for us and, and for our other clients who benefit. Um, but one of the things I think that really stands out is the, the culture there of the entire team, no matter what their role and function, from the driver on down to everybody else, are focused on winning races and winning championships. And that team view of getting every bit of performance out of everything everybody does all the time 
really opened our thinking to being broader than just the scheduling of the IT infrastructure, it's also about making the design team more productive and taking steps out of the process and anything we can do there, inclusive of the, the storage management and the data management over time. So it's not just the compute environment, it's also the virtualized storage environment. Right, and just massive amounts of storage. You said not only are you running and generating, I'm just going to use boatloads because I'm not sure which it's, version it's, of the flops are going to use, but, but, but also you got historical data, and you have result data, and you've got model uh, that need to be tweaked and, and con continually upgraded so that you do better the following the following uh, race. Exactly, I mean, we're generating petabytes of data a year, and I think one of the issues which is probably different from most industries is our workflows are incredibly complex. So we have up to 200 discrete job steps for each workflow to actually kind of produce a simulation. This is where the kind of IBM Spectrum product range actually helps us do that efficiently. If you imagine a, an, aerospace, an aerospace engineer, aerodynamics engineer, trying to manually manage 200 individual job steps, it just wouldn't happen very efficiently. So this is where Spectrum Scale right. actually kind of helps us do that. So you mentioned it briefly, Bernie, but just a little bit more specifically, what are some of the other industries that you guys are, you know, are showcasing that are leveraging the power of Spectrum right. to basically win their races? Yeah, so I mean, we talked about the infrastructure and manufacturing, um, but or industrial uh, clients, but also in financial services. So I think in terms of risk analytics and financial models uh, being an important area. Also healthcare life sciences. So molecular biology, finding new drugs, so you talk about the competition and, right. and who wins, right? Uh, genomics research and advances there. Um, again, you, you need a system and an infrastructure that can chew through vast amounts of data, both the, the performance and the compute, as well as the long-term management with cost efficiency of huge volumes of data. And then you need that virtualized cluster so that you can run multiple workloads many times with an infrastructure that's running in 80%, 90% efficiency. Right. You can't afford to have silos of clusters. Right. We're seeing clients that have problems where they don't have this cluster virtualization software have cluster creep. Just like in the early days we had server sprawl, <laughs> right, with a different app on a different server and we need to virtualize the servers. Well now we're seeing cluster creep. Right, with Hadoop clusters and Spark clusters and machine learning and deep learning clusters, as well as the traditional HPC workload. Right. So what uh, Spectrum Computing does is virtualizes that shared cluster environment so that you can run all these different kind of workloads and drive up the efficiency of the environment. Because efficiency is really the key, right? You got to yeah. have efficiency, that's what, that's really where cloud got its start, you know, kind of eating into the traditional space, right? There's a lot of inefficient stuff out there, so you got to use your resources that, That's correct. Well, way too competitive. Correct, well we're also seeing inefficiencies in the use of cloud, yeah, right? So, so one of the, the features that we've added to the Spectrum Computing recently is automated dynamic cloud bursting. Right, so we have clients who say that you know, they've got their scientists or their design engineers spinning up clusters in the cloud to run workloads and then leaving the servers running and they're paying the bill. Right, so right. we built in automation where we push the workload and the data over the cloud, start the servers, run the workload. When the workload's done, spin down the servers and bring the data back to the user and it's very cost effective that way. It's pretty funny. Everyone talks often about the spin up, but they, they, they forget to talk about the spin down. Well, that, that's where the cost <laughs> savings is, exactly. Uh -huh. All right, so final words, Wayne, you know, as you look forward, it's super, a lot of technology in Formula One racing, you know, kind of what's next? Where do you guys go next in terms of trying to get another edge in Formula One racing, um, Red Bull specifically? I mean, I, I'm hoping they re kind of reduce the restrictions on HPC so we can actually start using CFD and the software IBM provides in a serious manner so we can actually start pushing the technologies way beyond where they are at the moment. It's really interesting yeah. that they, <laughs> that is a restriction, right? You think of like plates and, and size of the engine and, right. and these types of things as the rule restrictions, but they're actually restricting, based on data size, your use of, of yep. high-performance computing. Yeah, they're trying to save money, basically, but. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. So, <laughs> whether, like, whether it's a rule or you know, your shareholders, right, everybody's right. trying to save right, money. Right, right. All right, so Bernie, what are you looking at? So 2017 is coming to an end. It's hard for me to say that. Yeah. Uh, as you look forward to 2018, what are some of your priorities for, uh, for well, 2018? Well, the really important thing, and we're hearing it at this conference, and I'm talking with the analysts and with the clients, 
The next generation of HPC and analytics is what we're calling machine learning, deep learning, cognitive AI, whatever you want to call it. That's just the new generation of this workload. And our spectrum conductor offering and our new deep learning impact capability to automate the training of deep learning models so that you can more quickly get to an accurate model like in, in hours or minutes, not days or weeks, right. that's going to be a huge breakthrough. And based on our early client experience this year, I think 2018 is going to be a breakout year for putting that to work in commercial you know, enterprise use cases. All right, well I'll look forward to the briefing a year from now at Supercomputing Absolutely. 2018. All right, Bernie Wayne, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day, appreciate it. You're welcome, thank you. Thank you. All right, he's Bernie, he's Wayne, I'm Jeff Frick. We're talking Formula One Red Bull Racing here at Supercomputing 2017. Thanks for watching.